Now, after World War II, during September 1957, Pope John XXIII gave Jesuit theater a broader horizon with his encyclical Miranda Prostus. And this is what he wrote. Men must be brought into closer communion with one another. They must become socially minded. Have you heard of social doctrine? Their technical arts, cinema, sound, broadcasting, and television can achieve this aim far more easily than the printed word. The Catholic Church is keenly desirous that these means be converted to the spreading and advancement of everything that can be truly called good. I want to remind you that in the occult world, in the esoteric world, good becomes evil and evil becomes good. So if somebody says something is good, you could in your mind just twist it around and say evil must triumph. Embracing, as she does, the whole of human society within the orbit of her divinely appointed mission, she is directly concerned with the fostering of civilization amongst all people. So here is a move to embrace all of humanity. That means all of humanity must receive the same mindset. John the Twenty-Third urged that pious national films reviewing offices be entrusted to men who are experienced in cinema. At the same time, we urge that the faithful, and particularly those who are militant in the cause of Catholic action, and added there, that must be the Jesuits and their protégé, they are the ones, be suitably instructed so that they may appreciate the need for giving these offices their willing, united, and effective support. In 1964, Pope Paul VI amplified this encyclical, Miranda Prozus, with the decree Intermerifica amongst the wonders. And what he said is stunning. He said, quote, It is the church's birthright to use, please note, to use and own the press, the cinema, the radio, television, and others of like nature. That must include the internet. So how much of the media world does it control? Do they want to control? Own and control? All of it. All of it. Then he cited a special responsibility for the proper use of the means of social communication, which rests on journalists, writers, actors, designers, Producers, exhibitors, distributors, operators, sellers, critics. So even that which you hear about that which is done by them will be done by them, so the critics will be either on this side or that side of the spectrum using Hegelian dialectic to so confuse you that you don't know whether you're Arthur or Martha at the end of the day. So it is the church's birthright not only to own, but to control all media, all social media. The quality of the entertainment content was decreed in a section of Intermerifica encouraging the chronicling, the description, the representation of moral evil, which can, with the help of the means of social communication and with suitable dramatization, lead to a deeper knowledge and analysis of man and to manifestation of the true and the good in all their splendor. Here's the battle for the mind, good and evil. Now, what good and evil? Biblical, based, good and evil? Or worldly based, good and evil? Esoteric, good and evil? Well, let's continue. Emboldened by this papal decree, social communicators have been talking about free speech and all of the issues that are involved. Now, if we take cognizance of the fact that there are two, own, control, all the media, and to use it to instill mindsets in people, then I would like to know how this is achieved without anyone knowing how it's done. Isn't that what the General Sung Tzu said? We have to achieve things without anyone knowing how it's done. And we must never ever be the target. It's always good to use the enemy to do the work for you, 
And even if you represent the enemy, you will pretend that you are not the enemy, that someone else is the enemy. So